practice um, with use Wolfram, whatever you want to do. Uh, now, if we get into y equal to zero, we're going to get a little bit different situation here. And I'm going to try to draw this a little bit better. Here's my axes. One, two. Now I'm going to revolve around this right here. When I revolve around this axis, I'm going to have a little bit of problem when I do rotate this around. Because when I rotate this section around, I don't know if you can see it or not, but you're going to get a hole. You're going to get a hole in the middle. This voided out region in the middle is going to be a hole. It's like a donut. So I'm circling this around the axis, and it's just going to create a donut. So I have to take care of that idea. And so what you do then, it, well, it's pretty much exactly like I said, you, you do a donut. It's pi r squared minus pi r squared. So when I draw my cuts, it's going to be a little bit different. The cut always runs from your curve to your axis of rotation. It's like spoke on a wheel. Spoke on the wheel goes all the way to the axle out to the tire. And so here's my cut here. I'm going to be rotating that around. And then I'm also going to have another cut that I got to take out. And so my cut that I got to take out is going to be that one right there. And so when I set this up, let me set up the red one first. That is what we call our big radius. Big radius would be top minus bottom. Zero minus this curve, I get negative x squared plus two. When you square that, the negatives don't matter, so you could get away with some funny business there a little bit, but let's try to be consistent, top minus bottom. And then we say little r is going to be top minus bottom. That's gonna be consistent. That's always gonna be the value of one. So when I set up my integral now, it's still going to be from negative one to one. That doesn't change. So negative one to one of pi r squared so it's negative x squared plus 2 quantity squared dx. And now I'm going to subtract out this one. That's the whole. So I'm going to subtract out pi and then from negative 1 to 1 of this one, 1 squared dx. Pi r squared again. That's how you would set up the integral. Once again, I trust that you can do this on your calculator and get the answer. But that's the important thing, is how to set it up. This method with this hole in between, and I don't know how well you can picture it or not, but this piece right here is revolved around. When that happens, you get a hole similar to this. And so you take the big radius minus, the, uh, I gotta be careful, big radius squared minus the little radius squared. The common mistake some people do is this, is they think this, that is a no-no, that doesn't work. Same thing as for a donut, this is little r, and this is big r, and you're finding this area out here, you have to go pi r squared minus pi r squared. Don't do this, this is a very common mistake, be very careful. And then you end up with this hole in the middle, so that's what you're subtracting out. One other thing that's very important to note, and I did say it, but I think you should write this down. Cuts are always perpendicular to axis of rotation. And cuts run from curve two axis of rotation. So actually when I see this little cut here, I don't like it because I think of this cut and this cut, those two cuts instead. So be careful when you see this picture in here because it might be misleading and that's what leads students to doing this right here. So to finish with our last couple examples, this says that I have a curve two curves actually, and I want to find uh, what happens when this is rotated around an axis. What is the volume? So if I take this, first of all, best to start off with a picture. Here's square root of x. So this is my f, and this is my g. Not a great picture, but I think you get the idea. 
This is going to be rotated around the x-axis. So this is my axis of rotation. When I do that, uh, if you can picture this, this region is going to be whipped around here. So it's going to be a hole in the middle and solid around the exterior. When that happens, then I'm going to get two radii. I got this big R and then this little r. And so when I set this up, it's going to be pi r squared. And what are my values here? This is 0 and this is 1, 1. You can check that simultaneous equations, whatever you want to do. And then this is from 0 to 1, pi r squared, big R. Big R actually turns out to be my f. Oh, the square root of x. And then what you do is you subtract out this one, so this would be minus pi, 0 to 1 again, and then I got x squared squared dx. So that would be the volume created by rotating this thing around over and over again. Uh, if I change this and I rotate it around y equal to 3, let me draw this again, here's f, here's g, now I'm going to rotate it around this y equal to 3. When I do a bigger radius, what's going to happen, and you can find the value of this and then go ahead and find the value of this one, bigger radius means that I'm whipping this thing around a much greater expanse. And so when that happens, bigger radius, I'm going to get much more volume. And this definitely is a bigger radius that we're dealing with. So I always draw my cut from my curve to my axis of rotation. So that would be my big R. And then this one would be my little r. And so when I do this, I find the length of those cuts. The length of those cuts is just top minus the bottom. So big R is going to be 3 minus, oh, which curve is this? Oh, the x squared, yes. And little r is 3 minus square root of x. So if we put this in, this is going to be 0 to 1. I got my pi. This one, 3 minus x squared. 3 uh, quantity squared dx and then subtract off pi 0 to 1 of 3 minus square root of x quantity squared dx. That would give you the volume created by whipping this one around. And then this last example, find the volume of the solid uh, with this region. Square root of x, no, we need a picture. And so you always got to be careful with these things. I know when I used to draw the pictures for these, I'd get a little confused. Here's square root of x. x equal to 0 would be this um, axis, y-axis, and then y equal to 2. y equal to 2 would be like right here. And so the region that's bounded by all three of these would be this region here. If I'm revolving around the y-axis, oh, this is a little bit different for us. This is a vertical line or a vertical axis of rotation that we're rotating around. So when we do this, we are going to have to use everything in dy. It's a little bit different. Cuts are perpendicular to axis of rotation. So we call this delta y. Delta y turns everything into y. If I look at my function here, this is y equals square root of x. I need x in terms of y, though. So if I change this over, x would equal y squared. That's the function I'm actually looking at here. And if I look at what my y's run from, y's run from 0 to 2. So when I do this dy thing, everything has to be in terms of y. So it's going to be pi r squared. y runs from 0 to 2. And my function is going to be this thing in terms of y. So it's y squared. Don't forget to square it now. So it's pi r squared. R is the x squared, uh, sorry, y squared. And then I finish it off with a dy. That would give me my volume. Now if you do it around the x-axis, same exact region, you need to find a few different things. Oh, this is going to be much different, isn't it? And so my cut here... That's going to be my big radius, and then this one would be my little radius. And so I'm going to revolve this one around. I'm going to end up with a hole. So we call this the washer method. Um, I kind of skipped over some of the washer method discussion, but there's going to be that hole. 
So with this, I'm going to have pi. Big R is just going to be this value. Well, it turns out to be 2, right? So it's going to be 2 quantity squared dx. That would give me, and if you think about it, it's just a cylinder. Radius 2, pi r squared. And we're going to be adding them all up from 0 all the way to, is this 2 anymore? I'll figure out what this point is. It turns out to be 4, 2. So my x value here is going to be a 4. And then I'm going to subtract out pi r squared again. So this would be from 0 to 4. And then this radius will just be square root of x. I don't use y squared anymore because these cuts are uh, up and down. So it's a delta x. And so I'm going to get the square root of x quantity squared dx. So whenever you have the hole in the graph, it's a little bit trickier. You're going to have to subtract it out. That's called the washer method, which is uh, used for bolts and etc. And then if you don't have that, then it's not as bad. Uh, if your axis of revolution is something different than the x or y axis, excuse me, axis, then you're going to end up with some of the subtraction business, which isn't too bad. You just have to take top minus bottom, or if it's dy, right like minus left. And just remember, it's pi r squared. It's area, pi r squared dx. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next video.